Wait, you can make money on YouTube? Yes, in 2021, people are still asking this question. But while people might be familiar with huge creators like Mr. Beast or Logan Paul who make millions of dollars a year off the backs of their YouTube businesses, most people still don't realize how much money you can make on YouTube, even as a relatively small channel with only 5,000 subscribers. So I'm making this video to show one, that it is still possible to make money on YouTube in 2021, and two, if you already have an established channel that's maybe around the same size as mine, you can compare how well you're monetizing compared to my channel, and maybe also get some ideas for how to monetize your channel better. So in this video, I'm going to go through the three main sources of income that I make on YouTube, and it's not all just from YouTube AdSense. I'm then going to talk about how these numbers have changed over the past several months as my channel's been growing. And finally, I'll talk about my general thoughts on being able to monetize better on YouTube or just on the internet in general. So hit the like button if you want, and let's start by talking about my three main sources of income on YouTube. So the first source of income is YouTube AdSense. Now I think that most people know that YouTube runs ads on all their videos, and then they pay out the creator based on the ads that are being run. Longer videos are gonna pay out more because you can put more ads in them, and videos in certain niches are going to pay out more. For example, for a personal finance company, I might get paid anywhere from 20 to $25 per thousand views, which is also called my CPM. At the same time, a gaming channel might be getting paid out two to $4 per thousand views. Now, that money that you're getting paid out is going to be split between you and YouTube. I, as the creator, get to keep 55% of that, and then YouTube is going to take 45% of that. So in the actual YouTube analytics page, they also calculate a number for you called your RPM which is the money that you actually take home per 1,000 views. My RPM right now, or at least for around the last 90 days, has been anywhere between $17 and $20 per 1,000 views. This is actually up from the RPM I was making back in March of this same year, where I was only getting paid around $11 per 1,000 views. This number can vary greatly even just between different videos. So for example, I had one video on Beanstalks where I think I was getting paid an RPM of $60 per 1,000 views, while for another video I might be making $5 per thousand views. So if you've watched other videos about how much money people make on YouTube, you might have already known all of that. But there's another factor in YouTube AdSense that most creators don't talk about and that's how long it actually takes to get paid by YouTube. You see, when you make AdSense on a given video, you're not paid out that money immediately. So for example, in June of 2021, all the money that I earned from June 1st through June 30th, that doesn't actually hit my bank account until July 21st. So the number that I'm going to report for this month is actually the YouTube AdSense that I would have earned back in June, but it's the money that actually hit my bank account this July, which totaled $467.23 this month. Now that number is actually the highest AdSense that I've earned up until this point. And that's because my channel is still growing. If we look at my channel AdSense from a year ago, it was $0 because my channel wasn't yet monetized because I didn't hit the requirements of having both 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours on my videos. In fact, it took around six months for me to actually reach that goal, which happened in December of 2020. At that point, I was getting paid out around $10 per day because the ad rates are so high in December from all the people doing holiday shopping. They then pretty much fell off a cliff into January where I was making anywhere from three to four dollars per day and then you can kind of see those numbers just steadily increased up until now so since january 2021 my earnings from youtube adsense have increased from around three or four dollars per day and they've gone up pretty steadily to now around 10 to 15 dollars per day which is a little bit over triple what i was making then now while that's not an insane amount of money and it's not enough money for me to live off of in an expensive city like chicago it is good to see that kind of growth, tripling from about seven months ago. And that's kind of one of the themes of all online businesses, their ability to scale without any extra effort. It takes the same effort for me to make $15 a day today as it did for me to make $4 a day back in January. But as you know from the title, AdSense is only a fraction of what I earned this month. And it's not even the biggest fraction. So let's now talk about sponsorships. So sponsorships are actually probably one of the biggest ways to actually make money on YouTube. In fact, some of the larger sponsorship deals could net hundreds of thousands of dollars for just a single video. But you're not gonna hear about those specific numbers because a lot of the times, the details of those sponsorship contracts are confidential. Sponsorships in general will pay you more than YouTube AdSense. So I mentioned earlier that my RPM was between $17 and $20 for a thousand views. 
Well, when you have a sponsorship, that pay range could range between about $40 for a thousand views to as high as $200 for a thousand views. Meaning that a sponsored video with 10,000 views could make anywhere from $400 to $2,000. And if you are a bigger creator who also publishes content on say Instagram or TikTok, you could negotiate even higher rates in order to incorporate a swipe up on Instagram or putting a link in the description of your TikTok. But I'm not a huge creator. And even though I have a few videos that have gotten over 10,000 views, that's definitely not not the norm on my channel at this point. But I still do get approached for sponsorships, probably around once a week. Now the vast majority of these sponsorship opportunities I turn down either because they seem like a scam or because the particular product or service that they're offering just doesn't seem that great to me. And I don't wanna promote something that I myself wouldn't use. So right now, even as a small creator, sponsors are reaching out. And even as a small creator, I have the ability to say no to sponsors that I'm not interested in and only say yes to sponsors where I think it would either be an interesting video or I just think it's a product that my audience would enjoy. So in total for the month of July, I made $500 from sponsorships, which is actually more money than I made from YouTube AdSense. Now I could have made more money by accepting more sponsorship deals, but my goal right now really isn't to maximize the earning potential of my channel. Honestly, all the money that I'm earning from my channel right now, I'm trying to find ways to reinvest back into the content, whether it's by buying better cameras, getting better audio quality, or just buying better editing software. So it really doesn't make sense to accept a sponsorship deal that would make my channel worse when I'm trying to invest in making it better. But if you are trying to maximize your earning potential, but you also wanna find good sponsorship offers, a pro tip that I picked up, maybe from Catherine Manning, is that you can look for companies that have recently undergone a Series A or Series B funding round as a startup. You can find these on websites like Crunchbase. These are gonna be companies that have a lot of spare cash to burn, and they're gonna be really focused on growing their user base, which is where a sponsorship comes in handy. Now, one potential downside with sponsors is it can sometimes take a long time to get paid out. Sometimes the payment terms are as long as 45 or even 60 days after actually posting the video for them. Now I've actually been relatively lucky and all of my sponsorships have paid out immediately after posting the video. So your mileage may vary on that one and it really depends on what you negotiate with with that particular sponsor. So the last major income source for my YouTube channel are affiliate links. Now affiliate links are one of those sources of income that a lot of people sleep on, but I don't think that's fair. Because unlike with sponsorships, which are a one-time payout, affiliate links have the potential to scale as your channel grows. An affiliate link is where a creator links directly to a product or service that a company is offering. And once someone uses that link to sign up for that service or to buy that product, some percentage of that money goes back to the creator. The nice thing about this is if you have a video unexpectedly go viral, as long as you have affiliate links in the description, those links are gonna be shown to that wider audience, even if that audience isn't consistent, which is why I say that it scales with your growth. I personally love this income source because in my view, it's a win-win. For example, I put the link to my camera gear in the description of my video and I get some percentage if people buy it. And if someone's actually interested in finding the same setup that I have, they can find it right there. So Amazon affiliate links are the first kind of link that I include in my description. Now, I've heard some people have a lot of success with these, but for me personally, I've actually never made any money off of these links because you need to hit a minimum threshold of $100 earned before Amazon will pay you out. Now, $100 for me at least is pretty hard to reach because you're only gonna earn around 3% of what someone spends when they click your link. So if someone goes out and buys a really expensive laptop, sure, you might earn some money but if they go out and buy a book, you're only gonna earn a few cents. The main source of affiliate income that I actually receive come from four different investing apps that I include in the description of all of my videos. Those are Webull, M1 Finance, Public, and Robinhood. These are great because with Webull, for example, when someone signs up, I get one free stock and then they also get a free stock, plus they get an additional free stock when they deposit at least $5. So this is a classic example of a win-win because everybody's getting free money. This month I had one referral from Webull for a value of $32.58. My next affiliate link is M1 Finance, which is a little bit simpler. Basically, if you deposit $100, they'll give you $30, and then they also give me $30. Now, I didn't have any referrals to M1 Finance this month. The next link I have is public, where when someone signs up for the investing platform, they get a free stock valued all the way up to $70 in companies like Amazon, Apple, Tesla, or a few others. This has been my single largest source of affiliate income this month, 
probably because I posted a review video of Public, which got a few more people interested in the app, so they ended up clicking the link in the description. In total, I've made $300 in public referrals this month. The last link I include in all my descriptions is Robinhood, where you sign up, you get a free stock, and then I also get a free stock but I haven't really made any referrals to Robinhood. I think because most of the people who watch my channel have already gotten that offer, so there's not really anybody else left to sign up. Now lastly, I did actually have one more affiliate referral this month, and that was to a company called Ground Floor, which is a platform where you can go and invest money into real estate loans. So if someone's gonna go out and flip a house, you can lend them money to do that flip, and then they'll pay some percentage back to you. Now, the reason I got a referral to this is because I made a previous video on Ground Floor, reviewing it as an investing platform. And in the description to that particular video, I included a link to the platform. So from that link, I made $20 this month. And actually in total, just from that one video, I've made around $160 from referrals to Ground Floor. So for the month of July, in total from affiliate links, I made $352.23, which is less than either AdSense or sponsorships were, but it was still a substantial portion of my income for relatively little effort. It takes a lot more time to actually create a sponsored video or even to create all the videos that AdSense is going to be run on than it takes to just add a link to an affiliate in your description. So if we were to add up my three main sources of income, that would be $467.23 from YouTube AdSense, $500 from sponsorships, and $352.23 from affiliate links. That comes to a total for the whole month of $13,019.46. Now, if we were to project that out over 12 months, that would come out to a yearly total of $15,833.52, which is actually just above minimum wage. Now granted, I don't get to keep all of that money. First of all, because when you work for yourself, either by running an LLC or in my case, a sole proprietorship, you have to pay something that's commonly called a self-employment tax. You see, if you look at your pay stub right now, there's gonna be a line item for Medicare and Social Security, and you're gonna be paying around 7.65% for that. What your pay stub will not show you is that your employer is also paying the same amount in taxes. Now, when you work for yourself, you have to pay both sides of that. So rather than paying 7.65%, you have to pay double that, 15.3%. But then on top of that 15.3%, you're still going to need to pay your regular income tax. So in total for me, the taxes that I'm paying on my YouTube earnings are probably around 40 to 50% every year. Now that's not me complaining, that's just me explaining the reality of how much money I'm actually going to take home from the amount of money that I'm earning from YouTube but I'm also not spending 40 hours a week making YouTube videos. Right now it takes me around eight hours to make one video. And that's between finding a topic, researching it, filming it, editing it, making a thumbnail and posting it. And I do two videos every week for a total of around 16 hours per week spent on YouTube stuff. So if I multiply that by four to account for the entire month, that's spending around 64 hours a month on YouTube. So if I wanted to calculate my hourly rate that I'm getting paid out by YouTube, it comes out to around $20.61 per hour, which is actually pretty good, especially considering I spent the first six months on YouTube not making any money whatsoever. So for anyone who's interested in potentially making more money on YouTube, I have a few tips that you can try out. One is add affiliate links to all of your videos. It's really easy to do and it's really a win-win situation since you get the benefit of whatever commission you're going to get paid out by the affiliate link. And in a lot of cases, like with the investing apps that I promote, the person that you're giving the link to also gets a benefit, either because they find a product they want or because they get some kind of bonus just for signing up. Number two is focus on scalable income. Getting paid for consulting services or for editing other people's videos is a great way if you need the money and you have a lot of time. But ultimately, if you wanna to scale to the point where your time and the amount of money you earn are completely decoupled, the only way to do that is to make sure that you're not getting paid based on the hour. So for example, I spend 16 hours a week right now to make $13,000 per month. And eight months ago, I spent 16 hours a week to make $0 per month. And my hope is six months from now, I'll still spend 16 hours a week to hopefully make two or three times what I'm making right now. Sure, I could make more money in the short term by working as say a freelance software engineer, but in the long term, there's a limit on how much you can make when you have to trade your hours for cash. Now, if you want to compare how much money I made in this video versus how I was doing five months ago when I had fewer than 3,000 subscribers, I made a video back in March, 2021, talking about how much money I was making then. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.